What's going on? It's Aline from Ambitious Labs. And in this lesson, I'm going to uncover one of the most frequently asked questions that I get from builders working in Flutterflow. Since most of y'all are non-technical and this is your first rodeo building apps, one of the biggest questions I see is how do I version my app? How do I think about app versioning? What does build number mean? What is the app version? Um, and so in this lesson, I put together a very basic document to go over in layman terms how to think about versioning your app. So let's jump right into it. Um, this is typically how a version number looks. This concept is called semantic versioning, and it's used across the entire software development industry. No matter what type of app you're building, you're always going to see this type of semantic versioning. So how does this semantic versioning work? Well, the first number in the version string right here, number one, is your major version, right? So this is the largest uh, kind of hierarchy of update you can make to your application. For example, you just updated the colors in the UI of your entire app, or say this is the first version of your app. That would be considered a V1. Okay, say you iterate on your app over time, and then you say, hey, I'm gonna change my entire color scheme from red and orange to you know black and blue. And you redo the entire uh, brand of your app. Well, that would be known as a V2. Or say you completely scrap the entire app and you move your app from React to Flutterflow. That's considered a major version because you're completely changing how the app looks and feels. So that's where you would go from V1 to V2 to V3. Okay. Then the second number in the equation is your minor version. Okay. So this is a update that you would make that's kind of substantial, but not substantial enough to where it would warrant a major version, like a whole brand refresh. Say you added a new screen or you implemented a new feature, right? This is where you would put a minor version. Um, so say you added another screen in your onboarding flow, or say you didn't have an onboarding flow at the beginning and now you just added one. That's where you'll go from V1.1 to V1.2, 1.3. Okay, so that's, that's the minor version. Then you have patch version, okay? So your patch version is the third number in your semantic string. This is um, a version that you know represents a very small bug, right? Something maybe you addressed a bug, maybe you changed some colors, maybe you changed some copy on a page. This is just a very, very small, maybe a one or two line fix, nothing more. Um, typically patches come up when you're addressing like critical bugs or um, you're just trying to improve a flow that you caught after you shipped the app. So that's when you would use patch version. All right, the next component to semantic versioning that's specific to iOS is the build number. And you may have seen the build number inside of Flutterflow when you are working in the mobile deployment tab. You have your app version here and a build number here. So what's the difference between a build number and you know your uh, patch version? Well, a build number typically is used when you're going back and forth between test flight and Flutterflow. Say you're about to ship an app and you say, hey, I'm gonna ship version 1.1.1 and I'm gonna push it up to test flight and have my family and friends look at the app. Well, your family and friends download version 1.1.1, build number one, so say we're here in Flutterflow and we ship version 1.1.1, build number one. You send it to your family and friends and then they tell you, hey, um, Aleem, I found this um, typo in um, your home screen. And instead of you know, saying hello, it says hella. And honestly, for a typo, you don't need to bump your patch version to 1.1.1. Instead, what you can do is make that typo fix and then come to Flutterflow and just use another build number. And this build number allows you to ship the same exact version, but with another code. And so build numbers allow you to keep your app versioning unique and avoids having to bump your version uh, for no reason. So if you're making very, very small changes to the app and you're going back and forth between test flight, trying to get your app ready to ship to the app store, I highly recommend you stick with uh, build number bumps. Okay, so that's the difference between build number and patch number. And it leads me to some of the best practices and considerations that I wanna go over. Um, you just heard me say it, but version bumping, right? Version bumping is a slang term uh, used by developers to communicate bumping or increasing the version up by one unit. So if you hear any of our coaches say, or if you hear um, you know, out in the wild, like someone says, hey, just bump your version up, or hey, can you guys you know, um, bump the version by one? I don't think this makes sense. Um, or hey, can you bump up the build number? That's typically how that term is used, and um, we just don't want you to feel in the dark if you hear anybody say that. Okay, and then the next consideration is don't bump more than one version at a time. Like don't go from 1.1.1 um, to, you know, 1.2.3 for no reason, right? That 
has some implications and let me tell you why. Number one, it will confuse your users. And yes, users do look at version history in the app store because nowadays app consumers are very sophisticated and this gives a hint to your app consumer, like how organized you are as a developer. Um, typically when users are shopping for very niche apps or apps that are new to the market, they're looking at the version history to make sure that the developer is taking care of the app, making updates, um, and that they're organized. If they see an app that's all over the place or not being updated, uh, it, they're very likely to not uh, download your app or trust the version. So awesome. I hope this was helpful for any of the non-technical builders out there who are shipping apps in Flutterflow and are just confused on how to correctly manage uh, your version numbers in the app store. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in another lesson.